once that schema is extended, and once you've gone through the very long and arduous process of upgrading your domain controllers to your new operating system, and potentially relocating some of those FISMO roles, you've got one task left that has to do with raising the forest and domain functional level. And this is where things get fun. As I said, uh, raising the uh, functional levels is where you actually begin to see the benefits of all the work that you've put into this project. Now, these forest and domain functional levels are done just as before, once per forest and then once in each domain. And they happen down here in Active Directory Domains and Trusts. If I take a look at 80 Domains and Trusts, you'll find that there are two locations where I can actually do things. And it's two locations in this case because I only have one domain. The first is to actually raise the forest functional level, which happens here at the root. Now we're already here at server 2012 R2, so there's not going to be any dialog box for us to upgrade the forest functional level past this point until we go through another schema extension for whatever the version of Windows Server is after 2012 R2. This gives us the ability to run that forest at its highest, at its, at its highest possible forest functional level. Uh, be aware that this is a one-time activity. You can't go backwards once you make that switch to go to forwards to a new forest functional level. The same holds true when I raise the domain functional level to this new version, Windows Server 2012 R2. Now think for a minute about the exam and any possible exam questions that you might see. You might be thinking, okay, well I'm going through all this effort, what exactly do I gain out of doing this update? I told you that going through domain and forest functional levels is what gets you the new features. Well, what are those new features? I want to point you to a an, an, an living document that Microsoft has on its TechNet website that talks a bit about some of the Active Directory domain services functional levels. What's interesting is that the domain functional levels is where the majority of the new features are actually found. Skipping past some of the early operating systems for just a minute, making that jump to Windows Server 2008, for example, changes the sysvol replication from the old FRS to DFSR. Uh, we have DFS namespaces, we have the AES 128 and 256 support, we have the new last interactive logon information, fine-grained password policies were provided over at the server 2008 uh, domain functional level, personal virtual desktops if you're looking to do VDI with remote desktop services, authentication mechanism assurance, SPN management, uh, key, uh, Kerberos armoring is provided, DC protections and authentication policies and authentication policy silos here with server 2012 are too. I sped through these, but for the exam, I would at least have an understanding of what the new features are, particularly as they relate to Server 2012 and Server 2012 R2. So understand, you know, what Kerberos Armoring can do, what these new features here for 2012 R2 exist at the forest function, at the domain functional level. In the forest functional level, you really didn't see much except for this shift to 2003, because down here for 2012 and 2012 R2, you can see that all the features available at 08 R2 are there, but no additional features. So we haven't actually seen any new features really since the beginning of the Active Directory recycle bin back with 2008 R2. So again, plenty of new features that exist for the domain functional level. It's upgraded the forest functional level that you get this one big feature here with 08R2, but nothing else in 12 and 12R2.